Hello friends. <coughs> Dr. Srinidhi here. Friends, today we will discuss about treatment principles of chronic cough in pediatric practice and Ayurvedic perceptive. Yes, really chronic cough or recurrent cough is one of the major problem in pediatric practice. Chronic respiratory disorders as well as recurrent respiratory disorders are the main concern in the childhood pediatric practice as we encounter such cases frequently in our day-to-day -day practice, especially very commonly in children. children. Recurrent attacks of the respiratory infections are common owing to the immaturity of the immune system in the children. One can observe the functional and structural immunological deficiencies in the newborn, infant and as well as toddler as a main cause of such presentations. Meantime, the congenital abnormalities of the respiratory tract, cardiovascular system, oral cavity, face, and other areas of the upper respiratory tract also contribute to the major incidence of recurrent respiratory tract infection in children. Certain factors like dependency on others, excess intake of sweetish substances, growth potential, and some school environment also contribute to the same. Ayurveda explains the stage of Bala or the childhood as a stage of immaturity in structural, functional, emotional, linguistic and behavioral and sexual facets with the predominance of Kapha Dosha. As rightly Charaka says, Tatra Balam Nama Asam Purna Dhatu Ajata Venjanam Aklesha Saha Sukumaraha Asam Purna Viryatvat Prayashaha Shleshma Bahula so this is what Charaka says while explaining the immaturity of the children. So in children immaturity is there in each and every datu, each and every cell and as well as each and every system. So most of the respiratory problems in children are also aggravated by the habit of withholding the natural urges or what we say Vega Dharana as explained in Ayurveda. There are maximum protective reflexes in the upper part of the body pertaining to the respiratory system as this is the main portal of entry for maximum infections. So therefore God has given protective reflexes like sneezing, coughing, hiccup, shamashwasa, yawning, lacrimation etc. in the upper respiratory tract to keep away the respiratory tract from the infections and also from other external hazards. So hence, Hina, Madhyama and Atiyoga of these protective reflexes by the child because child is unaware of the fact that whether I have to hold the reflexes, whether I should not hold the reflexes, he is unaware because he is dependent on others and he is um, not so mature about all these things. Therefore, knowingly or unknowingly, he may have to hold the protective reflexes like Vegas and which may be also one of the significant cause of such recurrent respiratory tract infection. <coughs> so as far as one more important thing is concerned why respiratory tract infections especially recurrent respiratory tract infections are common in children as far as the structural and functional and immunological immaturity of the respiratory tract is concerned <coughs> there are certain unique anatomical differences in the upper respiratory tract of the children for example the terminal bronchioles of in children grows very slowly and its complete maturation takes place by the end of 8 years. Hence it is obvious that smaller airways, uh, airways always offer more resistance and further the elastic recoiling of the lung in children is also very less as compared to that of the adults which affect the act of ventilation. Meanwhile, the diaphragm is also flat when compared to the adults resulting in less pressure changes as vertical diameter is not more as expected. Bucket handle movement of the ribs which increases the transverse diameter of the chest is also less as the ribs are more horizontally placed in children. Intraluminal mucus production is also more which frequently causes the airway obstruction in children. And all the above factors which shows the anatomical immaturity of the respiratory tract in children are one of the main predisposing factors for the recurrent casa or recurrent cough. So these facts should be kept in mind always when you are treating the children with the child with casa. Further, the integrity of oral and respiratory mucosa is also on the lower side in children 
and further the effective ventilation is not possible due to change in the different lung volumes and capacity see the lung volume and capacity in children are much lesser when compared to the adult level tidal volume inspiratory reserve volume expiratory reserve volume so these are not up to the mark in children because of so many functional and structural limitations so all the above factors again totally contribute to more incidence of respiratory tract infection in children respiratory infections in children can be assessed by certain symptoms or manifestations high fever and purulent secretions when they are present are always mostly suggestive of bacterial infection meanwhile the immune deficiency status should be also reassessed recurrent infections which is occurring at a single site for, for example a child is getting pneumonia and pneumonia is occurring always in the upper lobe every time he get pneumonia in the upper lobe only or sometime in the mid lobe only so then we have to suggest we have to think that at that particular site there is some problem okay so there may be some anatomical problem related to that particular lobe of the lung which is lead into recurrent or repeated pneumonia in the same site it may be sometime due to lodging of some foreign bodies seed of some of the fruits okay so so there may be some anatomical obstruction or there may be some congenital anomalies some allergies or lodging of the foreign body at the site so when the infection or uh, a pneumonia like uh, bronchopneumonia etc so these are occurring in the one particular site always then we have to think that definitely this, uh, there is something wrong in that place maybe an anatomical anomaly may be there congenital anomaly may be there or some foreign bodies get lodged there or some typical allergies are there so this we have to assess meantime when recurrent infections are there the newborn and infants are there in newborn and infants so we have to take the proper birth history that is very important okay so if a mother is exposed to infection maternal infections are there premature babies see premature babies are always have immunity on the lower side and they are always more prone to uh, get the recurrent infection premature babies complications which are occurring at the time of the delivery or complications after the delivery for example bronchopulmonary dysplasia that a baby which is kept on oxygen for a long time for example days together or weeks together will going to develop a, a condition called as bronchopulmonary dysplasia this is a condition develops because of oxygen toxicity and there is degeneration and uh, loss of uh, the integrity of the bronchial uh, mucosa so that is called as bronchopulmonary dysplasia so that may be the cause of recurrent respiratory tract infection now you have to take the history of blood transfusions um and these are all some of the clues okay history of delayed umbilical cord separation is also quite useful sometime because this indicates leukocyte adhesion abnormalities usually those babies babies who have leukocyte adhesion abnormalities uh, we find usually that the umbilical cord separation is quite delayed so this gives a clue just a clue in the treatment okay chronic medical problems like uh, catheterization baby was kept in catheterization for urinary catheter catheterization or baby is on shunting uh, maybe cardiovascular shunting or baby maybe for uh, hydrocephalus like a shunting is there or any other prosthetic devices applied on the baby and that baby you take it granted that baby is uh, always more prone to have a recurrent respiratory tract infection and this this is the cause itself okay one more condition is a recurrent gastroesophageal reflex because the uh, cardiac sphincter or gastroesophageal sphincter that is quite uh, immature in newborn especially even up to toddler age also because of uh, the integrity of the circular smooth muscles of the cardiac sphincter is very very less and that may lead to frequent what you say the reflex of hcl into the esophagus and which in turn may reach up to the trachea and also sometime may cause the recurrent cause so gastroesophageal reflux in the newborn this is also one of the major cause for chronic cough similarly other conditions suppose some uh, a loss of integrity of the mucocutaneous barriers like dermal sinus tracts some burns surgical wounds so the whenever they are present in the body this is also one of the major cause for recurrent infections and also in cough history of immunodeficiency disorders in the family or uh, there is some there are, if there are some unexplained infant death risk factors uh, of hiv because hiv always cause immunodeficiency and uh, so uh, immunodeficiency child is always more prone to have recurrent respiratory infections environmental exposure to the allergens 
than pet animals in the home because some pet animals they may cause they may the, they may be the cause of allergy traveling uh, or changes in the routine of the child and congenital problems especially of the respiratory tract and cardiovascular tract and gastrointestinal tract these are some of the important things which has to be kept in mind especially about the congenital respiratory congenital problems see a child is having recurrent respiratory tract infection always you have to search for a congenital problem one of the most commonly missed part is a child suffering from ventricular septal defect vsd usually have recurrent respiratory tract infection many times if you don't auscultate this finding will going to miss similarly allergy is also one of the main cause for such a recurrence of Uh, respiratory tract infections so we find some allergic signs in the body in such condition allergic signs in the sense transverse nasal crease will be there allergic shiners will be there allergic salute child always give a salute that is rubbing the uh, nose in the upward direction it's called as allergic salute swollen pale nasal mucosa will be seen postnatal dripping will be na- uh, nasal dripping will be there then uh, scarred tympanic membrane will be there uh, cervical adenopathy may be seen sometime so these are some of the clues to assess the uh, allergy as the cause of a recurrent cough Frem- uh, similarly frequent non febrile episodes so the child is having cough recurrent cough but it is not with the febrile it is not with the fever okay so this again uh, give attention towards certain allergic phenomena uh, if the infection is a cause usually we will have fever but even there is no infection usually we don't have the fever but if the cough episodes are there without fever then instead of focusing on infection we have to focus on allergic factors or some other congenital factors okay similarly uh, poor response for the medication that is also commonly seen in med- uh, allergies history of food intolerance or uh, eczema or family history of atopic disease in the family poor growth failure to thrive dull child and recurrent infections in the same site are certain clues for us to mm, change our management towards the side of allergy chronic respiratory infections leads to systemic illness sometime decreased academic performances malnutrition and also poor appetite due to course of the time resulting in immunodeficiency status of the child Now, meanwhile, certain secondary disorders are also there, which may cause a chronic cough or recurrent cough. For example, cystic fibrosis. Of course, cystic fibrosis is a disease related to the mucous gland, where there is blockage of the mucous gland. This may happen in any exocrine gland of the body. It may happen in the pancreas. It may happen in the what you say your salivary gland, the testes. Anywhere cystic fibrosis can occur. Of course, this is an autosomal recessive problem, which is very quite common in. Uh, foreign countries european countries not so common in indians but uh, nowadays we also find this cystic fibrosis in indian population also immune deficiency syndromes diabetes mellitus sickle cell anemia cirrhosis these are all some of the systemic problems which may lead to recurrent